Hello out there fellow engineers and welcome back to another episode where today we are going to continue our discussion on pressurized pipe flow, the series that we have going on. And today we're going to kick up the challenge just a little bit. We've, we've talked about some very simple applications of the fluid energy equation. Today we're going to add a little bit of complexity to it. We're going to start off simple. What we have here is flow between two reservoirs. And if we look at our energy equation, which we always, pretty much always start with the energy equation, right? We have the pressure at point one over the specific weight of the fluid plus the elevation at point one plus the velocity at point one squared over two G, right? This is just a very standard application of the energy equation. Pressure at point two, elevation at point two, velocity at point two. Now, as I very often say in the videos and in my classes, it's really, fluid mechanics is, is very, you know, mechanical, right? And it's definitely a, just a, a, a series of steps of, of processes, right? But it absolutely depends on your ability to understand conditions at your endpoints or at the points of interest. So for example, we have two reservoirs here. We want to find what is the head loss. Oh, and actually, sorry, I should include here head loss, right? Oops. And so we want to know what is the head loss between these two points. Well, what do we know about these conditions? So what do we know about the pressure at point one and point two? For a reservoir, this is a free surface. So this surface is exposed to the atmosphere. So we know that this is atmospheric pressure at both point one and point two. And since they're equal, they're going to cancel out. All right, great. What do we know about the elevation? Well, we're given the elevation, right? The elevation at, at Z2, at point two, is whatever. It doesn't actually matter what it is. We can say it's zero. And then we know that the elevation at point one is 100 foot higher than whatever the elevation at point two is. So um, Z2, uh, Z, or excuse me, Z1 minus Z2 is gonna be 100 foot. Great, okay, so that's something we've got figured out. Now the tricky one is, what is the velocity in a reservoir? And well, the answer is we don't really know, right? It's going to be some very slow moving velocity. Because it's slow moving in orders of magnitude less than the velocity that you would find actually in the pipe, then basically we neglect it. It's even if we did solve it, it wouldn't really affect our end answer. And in most cases, we don't actually need that sort of level of uh, precision in our answers. So we can actually neglect velocity and essentially consider it to be zero, even though we know it's not. That's fine. So what we're left with is that our head loss is going to be equal to Z1 minus Z2, okay? Well, great, if that was your question, you know, in like the FE or something, if you were asked to find the head loss between these two points, you'd be done, it'd be 100 foot, right? Equals 100 foot. Great, that is a, you know, type of question that actually does come up often in the FE, but we can actually take it further. Um, so now we know the head loss, but what kind of flow rate or what kind of velocity would cause that much head loss? Because head loss is a function of velocity. So let's take a, a little bit deeper look here. The darcy weisbach equation, which hopefully you're familiar with if you're looking at the FE, is the head loss is uh, the 
um, friction factor, which is a function of the pipe material. Basically, it's how rough is the inner wall of the pipe that the fluid is in contact with. And the rougher it is, the more friction you'll have, right? So that's a function of the material, basically. Length, and of course, as a pipe gets longer, then the head loss is cumulative, right? So the longer the pipe, the more um, you know head loss you have cumulatively divided by the diameter times the velocity squared over 2g. So obviously the head loss is a function mostly of the pipe material and the velocity. And then of course the diameter and length of pipe, although length of pipe is kind of a lesser issue because it's usually um, considered as a gradient or in other words per length of pipe. But okay. So now that we know what the head loss is, right, it is 100 foot, so we can actually back calculate the velocity that would result in that kind of head loss. So let's do that. We have 100 foot is equal to, we're given the friction factor in this problem, 0 0.020. Sometimes you won't, sometimes you'll be given the material and you'll have to look it up in the table um, times 1000 foot this is the length of the pipe over one foot of the diameter which obviously was chosen for simplicity times the velocity squared over 2g now that's really what we're interested in right so we can you know rewrite this if we basically Combine these together, we have the velocity squared is equal to 100, that's our length, times 2g over 20, which this is uh, 0 0.02 times 1,000, gives us our 20. We multiply our 2g to 100, and then divide it by that 20. We're left with b squared, right? So then, um, oops. V is equal to, of course, this is a, the velocity of the flow in the pipe, is equal to 17.94 feet per second. And then if you wanted to calculate, or if you were asked to calculate the volumetric flow rate, of course, Q equals the velocity times the area, right? So that's, you know, a very simple step to get from there to there. Okay, great. Um, I hope that was helpful. We are obviously continuing our series on pipe flow. We are increasing our complexity. If you have any questions, please do put them in the comments. We're happy to try to help you out. Uh, if you do like this video, if you do find it useful, and I guess most importantly, if you want to see some more of these in this kind of this style, then please let us know with a like because that's the best way to let us know that you want some more of this. Um, good luck on your FE, and we'll see you on the next video.